Now I know this video is going to be kind of long, but I want to make sure and cover everything. So before anybody comments, I'm already acknowledging that it's a long video, but there's a lot of info to cover. Who of you has not heard about the debate over the 9mm and its effectiveness? I mean, the debate has gone on forever. Now real quick, you know, some history about the 9mm. It's been around a really long time. Uh, early 1900s came out with kind of the broom handle, the Mauser, but the Luger is really what brought it sort of into its own. Now, it was then the most popular and probably still is today for like submachine guns for the military. The, the Germans used it a lot in World War II. It's got a really long history. Now, what's interesting is, is with this debate, it's still the number one pistol round. Um, there's very few people that I know that don't have a nine millimeter. You know, so the question is, is if there's so much debate and so many people are concerned about its effectiveness, why is it still the most popular round? So this really all started in the 80s with a shootout in Miami involving the FBI. There was an assailant that had been shot several times um, and didn't go down and unfortunately killed several FBI agents. That got the FBI really looking into the effectiveness or stopping power of the 9 millimeter. <laughs> <laughs> and, and did they want to continue using that? The problem was, is the initial studies and what law enforcement and military all carried at that time was full metal jacket. You know, and the big, the big question was, is it, it basically just punched a hole straight through? Well, that's sort of what full metal jackets do. And so the initial research was based using full metal jackets. Then, you know, about 20 years later, Technology had changed, bullet types had changed, FBI had already switched to the 40 Smith and Wesson, and they went back and redid the research using hollow points and some of the new technology in ballistics, and that changed everything. What they found was with the right bullet, the 9mm was much more effective than they thought. They also had issues with the 40 Smith and Wesson having almost too much punch or penetrating um, depth. And if you actually look up the ballistics and some gel tests for the 40 Smith & Wesson, it almost doubles the depth of penetration of the 9 mil, which really doesn't solve the problem. Now, if it has a good bonded uh, hollow point or mushrooms, you know, you're still getting the advantage of the extra power. But what was happening was is accuracy was going down with the 40 Smith & Wesson. There was some qualification issues because of the recoil, and that also played a part in the FBI switching back to the 9. Now, the gold standard for their depth of penetration, you know, sort of the, the golden zone was 14 to 16 inches. And again, if you look at the 40 Smith & Wesson, it goes way beyond uh, 16 inches of penetration, as does most 9 millimeter, except if you have a good hollow point, especially like a bonded hollow point, um, the depth is going to be less, but you get good mushrooming. And basically when it mushrooms, you know, the nine millimeter can mushroom out almost to uh, 40, 45 caliber diameter, at least the ones that I have tested, they expand quite a bit. So with the advancement of technology nowadays, we have every kind of bullet you can possibly think of. You know, one of the problems with just the basic hollow point is jacket separation. If the jacket comes off of the lead, the jacket quickly falls behind and the lead will keep going and you'll have the penetration, but that lead is soft. And as it continues to go, it basically rounds out and it loses sort of that irregular shape, which is what really gives you the stopping power or causes the trauma and is delivering the energy that you want into the target. So now what you see is a huge popularity with bonded hollow points and core lock things that will essentially attach the, the copper jacket to the lead so that it doesn't separate. Now outside of that, there really is not a lot of different options as far as hollow points until not too long ago, Federal came out with a new round, and they were really thinking out of the box. It's called the Syntec Defense. It's a segmenting hollow point. Now, I have done several reviews with this on CCI and the 22, and have done extensive reviews on the 22 and the 22 mag with their segmenting hollow point, and I have found them 
very effective, especially for hunting small games. I even took a 30 pound bobcat with a 22 long rifle that was in my chicken coop at 25 yards and it stopped him. Now, Federal's new Syntec segmenting hollow point is 138 grain. It's polymer coated. And the idea is, is it breaks into three, actually four, separate projectiles. You have three petals that break off and go about six inches, and then the core continues on, which retains about two-thirds of the weight, and that actually penetrates then up to 18 inches, which then falls into the FBI's recommendation for penetration depth. This particular round has been around for a while. I've actually done several reviews on it. Um, I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit. What I want to do is proof is in the pudding. I want to take this round. I'm going to put it in some gel. I already know what it's going to do. And the proof is in the pudding. I wanted to show how effective it was. I took it to Oklahoma and went hog hunting. Let's check it out. I'm Drew Case. Welcome to Beyond Seclusion, where I only give you my honest opinion, and it is what it is. Now, here's the question. Everybody knows about the debate. It goes on and on, and most everybody has an opinion. So now the big question is, is why is the 9mm the number one pistol round out there? Why is it most people's choice? I mean, everybody that shoots, hardly anybody that I know does not have a 9mm. So why is that, despite the debate? And even some people not necessarily liking it, I guarantee you, most of them still have a 9mm. The 9mm is the number one choice for a lot of reasons. You know, I think the first and foremost is the light recoil and the number of rounds that you're able to carry. You know, it, it's hard to argue against, you know, a 45 and a 9 with, you know, like the 1911 where I've got seven rounds in, you know, the old-fashioned traditional mag versus 20 rounds in the 9mm. Most would agree that shot placement trumps everything. It trumps caliber and it trumps bullets. But if I've got a decent bullet and I'm a good shot, I much prefer to have the 20 rounds versus the 7. Now, with like 45 and some of the others, technology, they're doing double stack and we're getting up there in the round count. Another reason that the 9 is popular is the cost of the ammo. To have the good shot placement, I need to practice. I need to be a good shot. Well, when I go to the range, is it going to cost me 10 bucks or is it going to cost me 40 bucks? And the 9 mil is readily available, and we can get it in every con every configuration that you can think of from 90 grain to 147 grain, but we can buy it in bulk, and we can buy it cheap. Now, it has the low, the low recoil, which then usually equates to accurate shots, but also accurate follow-up shots, because if you do the research, um, we typically, we're not very good with our accuracy in a crisis situation. It's good to have 20 rounds available versus seven rounds. One of the other reasons that the nine stays popular is when we move into the larger calibers or the more powerful, the recoil goes up. Accuracy for a lot of people goes down. Now, there's a lot of you that shoot expert professionals, in which case a 45 or Smith and Wesson, 40 Smith and Wesson, you know, accuracy is not an issue. But for the average person, you know, they need to have time on the range and they're just not going to get it and they're going to have better accuracy with the 9. And I believe that that was actually critical in the FBI switching back to the 9 from the 40 Smith & Wesson was the issues that they were having with qualification um, for the shooting. Now, I always say proof is in the pudding. I have actually reviewed this round before and I've done a lot of reviews with 9mm with bonded hollow point spear up until this. Their bonded hollow point was my number one choice reason. I may throw in some video from some of the previous reviews. If not, you'll want to check those out. A neighbor had a cow that died of natural causes in the field, and that was the first time that I tested the Syntec on actual tissue, and the results were shocking. The core did exactly what it was supposed to. It actually went through a full-size 1,000-pound heifer, um, hit on one side of the rib cage, and stopped 
on the other side, which then was a double lung shot and did exactly what it was supposed to. And the three pedals actually penetrated really well into the lungs um, and, and did exactly what federal claims that it does. But I went hog hunting in Oklahoma and proof is in the pudding. I wanted to show what this could do. I felt pretty confident what it could do. What better way to prove that than to shoot a feral hog? You know, everybody knows about the debate with the nine millimeter. Everybody also knows how tough feral hogs are. Crazy. So Matt and I were talking. Um, you know, this is not unusual for hog hunting. And we just got that wall, that hog without so much as a twitch with a nine mil. And you've seen him run how far with something like this? Oh, I've tracked him three, 400 yards. Yeah. Was that a decent shot or was it a crappy shot? No, it was not a bad shot. Not a bad shot. Yeah. You know, shot placement, but the whole purpose of that video was the bullet type. I, I put a lot of emphasis on the bullet. Is it bonded? Is it going to have jacket separation? Does it fragment? Is it mushrooming? Anyway, interesting. Matt, Matt wants to show me something. What you got here, man? Got a shell that uh, has been spent and... Uh... The pigs walking along find it, pick it up in their mouth, and chew on it while they're walking around. Spin that around. <laughs> this is why I chose to shoot a hog with a 9 mil. I mean, they're tough. They're so tough that they pick up shell casings and, and chew, chew them, on them for fun. <laughs> if I can stop a feral hog with the 9 mil, that is proof. Now, before we do that, take a quick look at the specs and text so you know exactly what we're dealing with here. And before I forget, Federal, if Federal's watching this, I would really love to see them come out with this in a plus P and maybe a couple of different grains of bullets. But this 138 grain, I think, is perfect. But I would love to see the plus P so that we get a little more foot-pounds of energy. So I'm getting my Prodigy here ready to go hog hunting. So I want to have this zeroed at 25 yards using the Federal here. Let's take a look. Um, this had been zeroed at 50 using some range ammo, but I want to make sure that we're dead on at 25 yards. Let's take a look. Okay, and all those other targets I'm zeroing, some other stuff. This is the four shots with the Federal. I'm going to do a couple clicks up, see if we can get it. I'd like to get them right about here. Let's give it a go. Yeah, that's going to work just fine. Let's just quick shoot some ballistic gel and see what it does. Okay, so we're going to do the ballistic gel test. I wanted to use the exact same pistol that I went hog hunting with. And here is the ammo that we've been talking about. Let's see what it does. Proof is in the pudding, or in this case, proof is in the gel. Hey folks, are you enjoying this review? If you are, help support the channel. Hit that subscribe button. This helps more than just about anything. It's simple, quick, costs you nothing. Not a zip, zero, nothing. So hit that button. Keep the reviews coming. Now, if you have not visited my webpage, you should for many reasons, like my discount codes for some of the great companies, including ammo, guns, and gear. I have a list of the companies that I use the most and recommend at the bottom of the page is a list of current discount codes ranging anywhere from 5 to 15% off anything in your cart. Now, you should be interested in my crazy, stupid deal subscription. Here are some of the deals that I found in the past. And when I find these, I now have the ability to share in an instant with everyone that subscribes. And I blast them out in an email as soon as I find them. It costs you nothing. Unsubscribe at any time. I have saved folks hundreds, even thousands of dollars. Don't take my word. Read the comments. It works. It's awesome. And it costs nothing. If you follow my channel and you shop on Amazon, you can help support and keep the reviews coming by going on to Amazon through my link. Anything and everything you purchase by doing so helps support the channel. You can literally buy toilet paper through my link and it helps support the channel and the reviews. Simply save the link to your phone or your computer and shop as you always do. 
It Check out my highly rated online courses. They come with a 30 day money back guarantee. You got nothing to lose. Literally thousands have found them helpful. Read the reviews and see for yourself. And check out the cooking tips page. There are some awesome recipes on there. Good food. And it can literally save you thousands of dollars a year. Thanks for your help. Couldn't do it without you. Okay. So we have 16 inches of gel block here and the core went right through it came out the back we retained two pedals we've got one there and one down there and the third actually came out the side right here and the pedal depth is seven and a half inches uh pretty actually the other one the other one made it nine inches and the spread pattern of the pedals is five inches as well so we have basically a triangle of five inches between each of the pedals and then the core going through past 16 inches i was working on a review for aac's 300 blackout ammo and the jackal and i happen to have an extra ham i just figure hey you know one more example of what this round can do let's see what this does with this ham Well, it's not the most scientific. Uh, <laughs> that is, that is quite interesting. Here, let's get it up here. Okay, so there is the entrance. Okay, so here's the exit hole, and that, uh, yeah, you know, it is what it is, guys. If you follow my channel, I'm always about proof is in the pudding. Let's take this hog hunting. And you can see for yourself. That's a decent sized hog. He didn't even get up. So these guys, uh, you've seen them get shot with a rifle and take off? Keep trucking. And keep trucking. He just rolled over. Oh. Yeah, let's take a look here. So I hit him, got him here in the shoulder, and it came through. Look at that. That's what it did. Then, that's where it went through, and it started expanding. We had some pedals. Messed up these lungs came through and the center part went out but we couldn't we did find a pedal one of the pedals in the heart um actually the was there two holes there's two holes in the heart two holes one in the lung yeah and then we got our exit here and it came out this is what i've been telling you guys um, about this round and what it's capable of doing. I mean, that, what do we say? Proof's in the pudding, or in this case, <laughs> proof's in the hog. Now, some of you are going to say, oh, yeah, but it was the perfect shot. And, you know, I could have done the same thing with a full metal jacket in the perfect shot. Okay. I got two other hunts that I did with 10 millimeter. Check these out real quick. Both hogs ran anywhere from 30 to 50 yards with a perfect shot with a 10 millimeter double lung. One of them that was running up the hill, double lung, and took the top, the top of his heart off and still ran 20 yards or more.
there you go, guys. It is what it is. I don't know if that changes anybody's mind. Um, it, it confirmed what I already knew. Some of you, you're never going to change off the nine anyway, but hey, like I said, it is what it is. I hope you enjoyed the video, found it helpful. If so, be sure and hit that subscribe button, guys. It really helps the most. Um, be sure to like and comment. Until next time, happy shooting. Remember, educate our young people to shooting and gun safety. And every time we're on the range, every time we're shooting, hunting, doing anything with a firearm, everybody's watching us these days. Uh, that makes us ambassadors for the Second Amendment. So be a good ambassador, be a safe and responsible gun owner.